Okay, y'all, this is the third time I've tried recording this, and if this doesn't go well, we're just going to watch, like, The Muppets or something, because I'm over it. Anyway, um, today is the 10th of October. No, it's not. It is the 10th of November, 2020, and our learning objective for today is I can convert numerical expressions into visual models to help with mental math strategies. All right, so numerical expressions. I know I talked about this in my group yesterday, but um, one thing that I love about math is that it always tells us something, okay? So just like um, my face, my facial expressions can tell. Oh my goodness, I just had dinner and I just burped. I'm so sorry, excuse me. Just like my facial expressions can tell you a story. Okay, so what does this face mean? Okay, probably really excited. My facial expression told you that I was excited. I'm sorry about the lighting. I'm gonna have to figure that out. Um, this facial expression, what is this telling me? It's telling you that I'm probably pretty sad. Okay, so numerical expressions are when numbers are trying to tell us something. Usually it's telling us about groups of things that we have, about products, sums, quotients, uh, differences that we can get when we evaluate those expressions, okay? So we're going to take those numerical expressions and we're going to put them into visual models so that we can help solve using mental math strategies. One of the things that we're going to be using quite a bit today is the commutative property. Now notice, I did not say the commutative property. No, no, my friends. There, I, do you see an N in that word? Is there a letter N? in that word anywhere. No, my friends, that word is commutative, which means to move, okay? If somebody lives in Overland Park and they drive to Kansas City to work, they are commuting, they are moving, okay? And we can use that same idea of movement when we're talking about the commutative property in math. So write this down in your notebook, but the commutative property is in addition and multiplication, numbers can appear in any order and still equal the same sum or product. So we can see this, <clears throat> excuse me, we can see this with 8 plus 2 and 2 plus 8 with addition. They both have the sum of 10, right? And it didn't matter what order that they appeared in because they are affected by what's called the commutative property. You can move the numbers around and your sum will remain the same. Multiplication similarly works the same way. If you have 3 times 5, your product would be 15. Just like if you had 5 times 3, your product would still be 15. The only difference is that this first expression tells you that you have three groups of the unit 5, and your second expression tells you that you have five groups of the unit 3. Okay, <clears throat> or no, reverse that. This first one tells you that you have five groups of the unit three. Second one tells you that you have three groups of the unit five. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, I need to drink some water. So teacher, go ahead and pause the video. If um, your students are still writing this down, students, get it written in your vocab journals. Okay, so that's our new vocabulary for today. Let's check out that learning model one more time and then let's get to it. Okay, I can convert numerical expressions into visual models to help with mental math strat strategies. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking those numerical expressions, turning them into visual models like tape diagrams like we did yesterday, and using those to help us use some mental math to understand um, something, okay? So let's give this a whirl, shall we? Let's say we have eight groups of 31, okay? Eight groups of 31. Some of you can throw this into a standard algorithm and work well. I'm so happy for you. That's not what we're evaluating right now. Right now we are evaluating if we can use a visual model to help us use mental math strategies. 
okay? So if I wanted to multiply this, I um, could put this into a tape diagram, right? Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Put this into a tape diagram. Now I'm going to use something called an ellipsis. Some of you may have seen me do this in reading groups where we have a dot, dot, dot. What that dot, dot, dot tells you is that you have um, more of the same in here. Okay, so there's more information, um, but it's missing from what you can visually see. Okay, so when I have this ellipses in here, that tells me to fill in however many eights I need to fill in to get 31. Okay, I know I didn't explain that super well. So let me try this. Okay, this tape diagram represents 31 groups of eight. Okay, 31 groups of eight. I didn't want to take the time to draw 31 little boxes into this tape diagram. So I put in what's called an ellipses in here to tell you 